Hello hackers! Welcome to another video in the advanced exploitation module of Pwn College. Today we're going to be talking about escaping seccomp. If you recall, um, seccomp is a kernel sandboxing technique uh, that limits the types of syscalls you can run and limits the um, um, the arguments to these syscalls and 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 uh, basically lets you create secure sandboxes. If um, you create a seccomp sandbox properly, as I mentioned in the sandboxing module, um, it can be impossible to break out of, except for you can still interact in all of these modules with certain system calls. And if you trigger vulnerabilities in the kernel, you can escape the seccomp sandbox. Um, as I mentioned in that module, there's some um, a good amount of uh, sandbox escapes from, for example, the Chrome sandbox, which uses, among other things, seccomp, that are discussed um, at this Git repository. But I, at the time, during the seccomp module or during the sandboxing module, I said just hold on for the kernel exploitation module. We never made it that far in kernel exploitation because we had to shorten that module, but now we are making it that far. So why can you escape seccomp using kernel vulnerabilities? Well, if you recall, um, the kernel is the kind of end all of the operating of, of the system, right? The kernel runs with extreme privileges and the kernel keeps track of, for example, seccomp. Seccomp is implemented inside the kernel and it's implemented in a very similar way uh, or at, on a similar level as kernel modules are in general. So if you have a kernel module that has a vulnerability, that vulnerability has equal access to the seccomp metadata that seccomp itself does. Let's dig in. This is going to get kind of wild. Um, so we um, have previously seen the cred struct in the Linux kernel. We use this cred struct um, with uh, set creds and prepare kernel creds um, to achieve root access in the kernel exploitation module. Um, the cred struct is a member of the task struct and the task struct has other data in it as well. It has inlined inside the task struct, a kind of substructure of thread information. And in that thread information, there is among other things, a flags variable. And flags holds a bunch of bits. And these bits, it's a bit field, these bits encode a bunch of options, including an option called TIF underscore seccomp. I think it is bit eight in the flag struct. And what it does, of course, is enable seccomp. If you're very interested in this, um, in terms of how these things work deep down inside in the Linux kernel, highly recommend this, um, site called uh, uh, bootlin where you can crawl around the linux kernel source code of different versions etc click through it it's, it's super nice um, and you can track down all of this on your own anyways the point is in the thread info substructure of the task struct there is a flags uh, variable that holds tif seccomp how is tif seccomp used um we, we have to kind of uh, back up and look at how seccomp is implemented in the kernel. At one point in the syscall handler in the Linux kernel, um, there is um, a call to the secure computing function. The secure computer function, again, is a um, what is used to implement seccomp in the Linux kernel. Um, so in the syscall entry point, we call secure computing, which checks whether or not the TIF seccomp flag is set, and if it is, calls into underscore underscore secure computing, which figures out what um, seccomp structure is is um, has been set, uh, like what the seccomp options are, and then executes um, the seccomp filter. Right? This is how seccomp is implemented in the kernel, and it all hinges on this seccomp flag which is a flag on the thread info struct. So 
What's the takeaway? The takeaway is that we can escape seccomp. We can disable seccomp for our current thread by taking the task struct, getting the offset of thread info that flags, and um, uh, um, what's it called? Flipping the TIF seccomp bit. Let me show you what that will look like um, in actual C code. Um, first, what this uh, bit flip actually looks like. So um, we actually want to, of course, this is a bit field. TIF seccomp is the index. I think it's eight, but it, it obviously can change kernel, uh, kernel version to kernel version. We have a bit, um, a number, it's bit number eight, and we take a one bit, we shift it to the left by eight, we invert it, so we create a, a um, field where every bit is one except for the eighth bit from the right, and then we end it with the flags, thus disabling a single flag. All right, a couple of basics. How do we get um, to this um, whole, uh, the address of these flags? Well, we're in luck because the current task struct is used so frequently um, among some other information that the kernel always points the segment register GS to the current task struct. Um, this is a uh, register that you can, um, that is analogous to the FS register that you often see in the comparisons of canaries. So the uh, user space program has a reference to, among other things, the canary from the FS register. If you disassemble um, something that's protected by canary, you can see how that access works. Um, GS is the same in the Linux kernel. It is used for um, an access to the current thread struct. And in kernel development, there's actually a really easy shorthand for this called current that just returns the, the current um, task struct. So the plan to disable the TIF seccomp flag from the thread info flags is get the uh, access to this structure via the GS register, clear the flag, done, right? Caveat here is that uh, the children of this process, this, this process will no longer be seccomped, but its children will still be seccomped. That information, inherited uh, seccomp rules and stuff are stored elsewhere. All right, um, let's take a look at this in practice. So I uh, extended make root.ko or make root.c rather in the pwn kernel uh, repository. So um, as a reminder, pwn kernel is at github.com slash Pwn college slash pwn kernel. And here under source, make root. Uh, there's a lot of, of uh, there's several different kernel modules that'll show different um, functionalities in the kernel. You can build the kernel, you would build out of sage, launch it with launch. And uh, I accidentally showed you the wrong thing, but here we go. Um, github.com slash pwn kernel. Let me show the right window. Boom. All right. So in pwn kernel, um, we have a, uh, module called, uh, make root and make root has an IO, uh, CTL handler. If you send an ioctal parameter 1337, 1337, it'll give you root access as we saw in the kernel um, exploitation module. If you send a parameter of 31337, it'll escape uh, seccomp for you. And this is the code. Um, this underscore TIF seccomp is a, um, actually a shorthand for um, an, a macro that does one shifted to the left by TIF seccomp without the underscore, so it's the same thing. And this will clear the seccomp flag. All right, so um, let's demonstrate this by breaking out of this sandbox. I wrote uh, a sandbox that is actually very effective. We have a um, 
it sets the uh, real effective and saved user ID to one, two, three, four. No escape from that. And then it creates a strict set comp that only allows you IO, IOCTAL read and write. By default, it'll return negative one, three, three, seven from every other system call. That's to demonstrate this, um, um, this breakout so that I can log and stuff, um, poke at the, the sandbox. Of course, many sandboxes will just kill you or kill your process if you violated this one is nicer. All right, then we're going to um, show that this will return negative one, three, three, seven. This will not work, will not call get UID because that syscall is blocked. But then when we do this IO, IOCTAL on FOD Scripture 3, which luckily we opened before jumping into the, um, um, what's it called, the sandbox, um, and we do the IOCTAL 31337, we will have escaped the sandbox. Cool. So let's uh, take a look. All of this is actually not necessary. Um, Let's do this and rather than hard coding it, we'll pass this in. All right, so we have our attack, our sandbox and our attack. All right, let's compile this. Remember um, for use inside Pwn kernel uh, because there are no libraries in there in user space, you probably want to compile static. All right, let's launch. All right, let's uh, install this make root module and then we just launch home CTF and find our sandbox. Boom. It failed. Why did it fail? <laughs> All right, let me pause it and I'll figure out what's going on. I just tested this and it worked, but I must have broken something. All right, I'm back. Um, obviously the original sandbox escape worked and for some reason I deleted this part when talking to you, which is critical to uh, get root privileges and without which I can't open the flag because of course I dropped privileges to one, two, three, four. So we have a two step sandbox escape here. There are two parts of the sandbox, the set comp and the um, uh, user uh, um, UID drop, the privilege drop. So first we break out of the sandbox and then we break out of the, um, and then we elevate our privileges. Um, and we can see that this here is going to fail this call to get user ID because it's not included in the setcom filter. It'll return an error 1337. And then this call right here will succeed because we have disabled the setcom filter. All right, if we run this, oh, I ran it earlier, so, all right. If we run this, we get uh, make root.ko logging what the flags were before, what the flags were after. So this is uh, the eighth byte if zero indexed, of course. Um, TIF set comp is set, TIF set comp is not set. Um, and here we go. We said before breaking out, our get user ID was negative uh, one, three, three, seven. Then we broke out. Of course, this is uh, this is all buffered. This gets output immediately, so this should be interleaved, but it's not. Um, before we broke out of the sandbox, 
our get UID was negative one, two, three, seven. Then we broke out. Then it was one, two, three, four. Then we elevated privileges and then we got the flag, right? Um, so how do we actually figure out what the assembly of this is? Um, as we found out in the kernel module, um, disassembling these things is uh, kind of annoying. Um, of course, you can always um, check it out in GDB as it executes. So here's the device IOCTL. You can um, GDB Oops. Ah. Attach. Uh, did we, does it set the breakpoint? Yes. Okay. Continue. Run the sandbox. All right. Now we are in the breakpoint. And we go step instruction as a reminder. Sometimes on certain versions of GDB, next instruction doesn't actually work, but you can step into a function and then type finish to finish it. Here we go. If you're comparing 1337, 1337, that's the um, root privilege elevation. This guy, this is not what we're currently doing in the sand uh, in the sandbox attack. So we skip that. Now we're comparing against 3137. That is what we're doing. We go there. So we're going to print K that we're escaping the sandbox. You can see that here. Okay. Can, uh, and here we're going to print the, uh, um, flags before. Oops. This says flags before. And this says flags after. No, this says flags after. All right. You'll have to get used to uh, seeing the kernel uh, high memory addresses again. Um, all right. So where are our flags? Of course, our flags go here. Um, this is this gets put into RDI into print K. Our flags are in RSI. Um, and our flags are read from RBX into RSI and RBX is right here, that GS um, offset. Right? This is an actual instruction that takes the GS segment register, just a register that points indexes somewhere into memory um, and indexes hexadecimal 15D00 off of that. And that's where the flags are. Um, and then, of course, here is where it clears out the eighth bit of the flags. Very cool. Um, all right, so that is uh, how you escape a um, sandbox. Um, of course, this is all possible um, in the form that we saw. This is how you escape a seccom sandbox um, through a kernel vulnerability. Obviously, kernel modules aren't going to disable your seccom filter purposely, it'll be through some sort of crazy mistake um, that allows you to, for example, achieve code execution of the kernel and do something like this. Uh, basically in the kernel, uh, once you're in there and executing code, it's really game over. And hopefully you have seen that already, but you'll see it even more with this seccomp disabling.